we can resist any temptation that we uh, face. We can overcome with his help. I'd like to add something. God will give us grace. He gives you favor. He gives you mercy and kindness. And he gives you knowledge of his word. And grace and knowledge are two of the most important things that the Lord can give us. He also gives us newness of life. Now, how does he do that? When you accept Christ into your heart, into your life, this is found in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says here, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he becomes a new creation, a new person. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. You see that word there, will all things become new. For he has new things for us, new things for you to do, new things for you. He makes all things in your life new, new experiences as he changes your old life, passes away, and we are buried with Christ and risen with him. Our old self is crucified with him, is buried with him. And we, we are given this new life. Whatever habits you have, whatever tendencies you have, sins that you, you can't seem to be uh, free of, Christ comes into your life to free you from those bondages. His blood is what frees you. And I want you to know that, that you are free. You are free from bondages. He breaks the chains of sin off of your life. As you surrender your heart fully to him, you will experience this freedom. As you read his word, you'll, you'll gain more and more understanding. The, the eyes of your understanding will be opened. And you'll receive new revelation, meaning God will share with you the secret things that you know not. To the world, those things are hidden, and they cannot be understood. But God will make sure that he will give you the understanding for those, for his word, for those secret things. A God transforms us. He wants to transform us into his image. You know, not for ourselves. But he wants to transform us into his image. He wants to make sure that you know we look to him. Now this this verse is, is talking about transforming us to make us become more like him in, in his image. Jesus Christ, the image of God. And we want to become like him. Do you understand? We can become like him. <clears throat> and this is found in Second Corinthians. I want uh, Second Corinthians three, chapter three, verse eighteen, where it says, and "Our faces are not covered. They're not covered. They're not hidden. But we all show the Lord's glory." Think about this. Remember when Moses was walking up on the mountain and the, the presence of God and the cloud came down and he uh, communed, talked with God and God gave him the Ten Commandments and he walked down the mountain. What did people see? They saw the glory of the Lord in Moses' eyes. And, and Moses, it was so strong that Moses had to wear a veil and cover his face because the people couldn't stand to see the presence of God. It was so strong. And the people were blinded. And that's the true story, Scripture says. It's in the Old Testament. 
Now we are not the same as Moses, but we can show, we can radiate, radiate the glory of God so that people in the world can see. They can see the Lord in our eyes and it's beautiful. So we're, so we're called to be changed, to be like Him. And this change in us brings more glory in our life. I want to explain what that means. More and more glory. So when we accept the Lord, our old life has passed away and our life becomes new. And as we experience the presence of, the, of God and we get closer and closer to Him and our spirit grows stronger, His glory falls on us. And we, I, I'm telling you that you need to be in the presence of God every day. You know, it's easy to wake up, forget about God, work, forget, and get busy with your day. But it's so important to keep your hearts and minds on Him. To be in his, to enter his presence every day. You cannot grow without entering his presence, without spending time with God. We need his grace in, in this life. We need his protection. You know, sometimes in life we, we, we face difficult things and we don't know what to do. And we kneel down and we ask God to give us wisdom to help us to deal with this particular struggle or problem that we have. And, and He helps us overcome those things by His grace. So that glory comes from the Lord. And that is the Spirit. It's God's Spirit. And the Holy Spirit becomes, the presence of God comes and lives within us. It says, I call, ask Father, with his great glory, to give you the power to be strong in your inner person. I pray that Christ will live in your hearts because of your faith. I pray that your life will be strong in love and be, and be built on love. And I pray that you all and all God's holy people will have the power of under, to understand the greatness of Christ's love. I pray that you understand how how high, long, wide, and deep that love is. Christ's love, greater than any person can know, the fullness of God. So, to reiterate this scripture, the love of God, how high and long and deep His love is, to understand that, you get the fullness of God. It's a gift of blessing. We can experience that fullness of God. To experience the, the, the gift that He gives us to, of His love. So if we persevere in Christ with His love in our heart, we can know Him. reveal himself to us if we if we spend time in the spirit with God and commune with him we can know him in a deeper way God is doing a good work this is found in Philippians 1 6 it says Paul is speaking himself. 
He says, in being confident of this, that God began a good work in you, will bring it to completion. Meaning, the work that he's doing in you, you will grow and mature in, in the spirit, spiritual things of God. So God has begun that work. So it's like, you know how the potter uh, puts the clay on the wheel, and it's a big, ugly hunk of clay, and, and he just molds and shapes it into a beautiful vessel. And God is the potter, and I'm the clay. That's what we are, the clay, and he molds us. Imagine that, that, that concept. It's the same thing, he's molding us. We should allow him to mold us to become in his image. We don't want to follow the ways of the world. We want to allow him to mold us and shape us. When Jesus comes back, and he will, and when he takes us up into heaven, the work will be complete in, in, a, in a moment. You know, all the people in Christ have died and are alive and people are alive now will we'll, we'll all be taken in that moment. It says pray, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. A righteous person person. You are a righteous person. Yeah. Because you are in Christ. Because of Christ. Is a power is powerful and effective. Because our prayers when we pray, we are activating our faith is activating the, the power of God. God God is doing great things in our lives. And he, he, he causes our ministry to grow, and he causes us to mature, and he causes us to meet people in, and to show them the glory of God. And he, does, he does all these different kinds of works in, in, in our lives, and he gives us his word to teach us, to help us to grow, and to help us mature. Um, my wife and I, Jenny, we went to this huge church. <coughs> over 10,000 people in attendance. And the pastor, he emphasized prayer at that church. Now, I never really considered prayer. I thought it was important, but I, I learned through this pastor how important my prayer life is and how serious it is. And I took that word and I put it in my heart and I went home and Jenny and I started waking up at 6 o'clock every morning and praying. And we've noticed a change. We, we were able to see God's face. And God be, a, began to work in our hearts and cause us to mature and change. So I truly believe that prayer is the key to talk to God. And he'll talk to you. You know, that's why this verse says a prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Not only that. But when we pray for people, that's called intercession. When we pray for other people, we pray um, on their behalf. We pray for other people for their needs, and and, and God and does a work in them, and He changes them through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we we're called to pray for the saints, to pray for each other. <coughs> So that's what it means when a prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. And you are righteous and you can pray. I know sometimes, you know, we're uh, afraid to approach God, but you don't have to be afraid of God. He is holy, but He is love, and He is merciful, and He sh sh gives us His grace. But we do not have to be afraid. We can approach Him with boldness. And we can share with him um, our heart. And he gives us our word. And as we study his word and read his word, we change and we, we begin to notice the glory of God. And 
and I can see the glory of God in you. We, we, and other people can notice the glory.